Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, Tableau is changing the release cadence for Tableau releases starting right now. To find out more, let's get stuck in. Okay, so Tableau posted this blog today. Uh, it's a update on the release cadence for Tableau. Uh, now this has happened in the past. Previously, Tableau Server, Tableau Cloud, Tableau Desktop used to always be in lockstep. Uh, you'd get four releases a year, um, 2021, 22.3.4. And actually previous to that, we used to have just version numbers. So you used to have version one, version two, version three. We got to version uh, 10. And then after version 10, they started switching to years to kind of make it more consistent. So this isn't unusual. This is pretty common. And actually for uh, you know technology, the scale of Tableau, you'd start to think that these kinds of changes are routine. But this one is, is slightly different because it's actually not the kind of change I was expecting. Um, so Tableau posted a blog post. And in summary, what they're going to be doing is going from four releases a year to just three releases a year. And all the existing uh, sort of cadence of server stays as is. So what does that mean? Well, what they've done here is they've sort of broken down uh, the releases here. And you can actually read this blog post. I'll put it in the link below. But I actually thought it'd be better to visualize. I thought I'd actually just explain releases for everyone's benefit. So if we go back to, uh, I've got an Excalidraw uh, page here. If we go back to this, you'll know that Tableau releases sort of work in this uh, way, 23.2.2. And if you go look at the version, you'll see typically these numbers. And so the first part is just the year of the release. The second part is the uh, quarter, I used to call it, the specific release for that year. Then the last one is a patch. Now, patches are fixes. You can kind of see this quite common in the Tableau uh, ecosystem. If I go to the Tableau desktop landing page, if you look under 23.2, you'll see that it's had three releases. So these are all uh, patches, 23.2.1 uh, and 23.2.2 are patches. They're essentially fixes. And actually, if you go back, let's say to 21.3, you'll see that even as recent as the 17th of August, uh, patch number 26 for 21.3 was just released. So Tableau is really good at maintaining a specific version for a long period of time, doing fixes across the whole um, capability set. And that, you know, that includes security to fixes as well. So it's not just new features, it's also patches for old ones. And they've always been pretty good about that. And you can actually check this for pretty much every product. If you go to server though, you'll notice that uh, uh, there used to be a point up until 2020.4 or 20.4, sorry, where actually, no, that's wrong. Uh, it's actually 21.4 was the last um, sort of four release year for a uh, Tableau server. And then it changed to being every other release. So we've actually had uh, only, I think it's only, well, it's going to be four releases. So we'll get 23.3. .3. So four releases since that change, uh, we're going to get another change as well. So that's uh, that's something to be familiar with. And again, these all get patches. So it's not that Tableau stop updating the software. The patches are always there. Now, if we go back to this diagram, um, what does this actually look like? So if you look here, you can see this is the previous release cycle. And I'll put a, a link to this image uh, in, the, in the description so you can grab it. Or you can just take a screen shot probably that's going to be the easiest thing to do if I just uh, move this over here you can take a screenshot there um, you can see here that the previous tablet release cycle uh, we work like this you'd get four releases and what it meant was that server would be kind of out of lockstep what this actually means is if you're running Tableau Server, you need to make sure that your desktop and prep releases stay in tune with your server because, of course, server is going to be where you're publishing content. So if someone runs ahead and upgrades desktop um, ahead of time, then in essence, that version won't be compatible with server. Now, there's a, there's some quirks. Uh, sometimes uh, the, there's compatibility allowances uh, in the product. So, for example, if you upgrade your server ahead of desktop, that's typically OK. Um, and in some cases, you can also downgrade a workbook doing some nasty tricks. But long story short, you want to try and keep your releases in lockstep. So the new release cycle looks like this. And actually uh, highlights an interesting challenge for Tableau server customers. Uh, but we'll come to that in a second. The new release cycle basically goes down to three. So we lose the orange releases. Um, it's changed to this dot, dot one, dot two, dot three. And then, of course, because server maintains its cadence of being released every other release, it does mean that in some years you get one release and in other years you get two. So in this year, for example, we're going to get two releases. We'll have 23.1 and 23.3. But next year, if I just go over to the right here, if I just delete this, actually, I've already sort of visualized this um, ahead of time. You'll see that next year there'll just be one release. 
24.2. So that is a pretty interesting dynamic because um, I think it makes it, it makes sort of the proposition an interesting question. Um, now, what is supposed to happen though? And if you go back to the blog post, if I just go back here and I just hover over this um, uh, blog post, the the sort of logic for it, I think, does make sense. If you look at most technology platforms, um, you tend to find that they start by upgrading features very, very quickly when they're young. If you take the iPhone, if you take uh, software, Windows, all of these uh, technologies that we've been using for years. When I sort of grew up with these things, they had big releases every year, even processes and chips. Everything came out in massive strides in the very, very early years of those companies. And then as they started to settle down, Innovation becomes a little bit harder, maybe a little bit more tricky. Maybe companies become complacent. I'm not saying that's what Tableau have done, but I'm just saying uh, things take a little bit more time because of scale, because of the number of customers. It's just hard to roll things out. And actually, it's fair to say that since uh, this sort of uh, you know increased volume of capability in Tableau, these releases have been having more bugs. You can kind of see that in the fixes and release notes that come out. There are frequent patches, and sometimes we've even had issues where we've had to roll back servers or roll back desktop uh, deployments because of these issues. The other thing is that the super interesting uh, dynamic here is that it might also give features a little bit more time to cook. Part of the problem here is that you have to get your features into a specific release cycle in order for them to land. And I think what was maybe happening is that features were sort of falling out of lockstep. Now, I actually made a video, I just made a video about how features need to sort of bake more, they need to come out more complete, and I actually kind of support this uh, approach. This is sort of a way of doing that. Reducing the cycles means uh, there's probably two opportunities for each product team to get their release into any given year. And it might actually mean you get better feedback cycles, slightly longer feedback cycles. And uh, in various discussions, I've also talked about uh, bringing back sort of the old style betas we used to have. Because the release cycles are longer, you can have more of a preview and a beta period to test things and get things more stable ahead of time. So I think that is a good thing. What is difficult is the value proposition, because of course, uh, Tableau Cloud will still get three releases a year, but in some years, Tableau Server will only get one, one release. And the issue there is that in those years, desktop will stay possibly like, you know, half a year to maybe more behind. And the reason I say more is because it takes companies long time to update to the latest version. And I think today, most enterprise companies who have Tableau Server at least upgrade probably on a yearly cadence. They have small patches and fixes throughout the year, but then they choose a specific point in the year to upgrade. And so if your timing is slightly off, you might just miss the release that you actually want with the nice stuff. Um, but I think it makes uh, the one release a year really, really important. I think it might actually make, for example, next year, the 24 dot, uh, I wanna say two, is I even right? Let me go back to my little diagram, I can't remember. Yeah, so 24.2 feels to me like a critical update because that is the only release where you can get features into server. So what it kind of suggests is that, look, we're about to get 23.3, we know all the features in that. We're about to get 24.1 early next year. We'll probably see a nice group of features, but 24.2 should be an absolute blockbuster release because in essence, all the features that have been cooking pretty much from you know Dreamforce and the conference that they said would come out by the end of the year, which now won't because 23.4 won't be released this year. 23.3 will be the last release won't make it until next year. And so that is going to make server upgrades probably much more meaningful because of this huge jump you're gonna get uh, with this sort of eight month cycle. And the other thing is that I think it might also allow for more feedback and um, more engagement. That said, it doesn't change the fact that more features are coming out for Tableau Cloud than ever. Um, there are just whole uh, bunches of features that will probably work better in Tableau Cloud and will only work better in Tableau Cloud. And so that, that, that dynamic doesn't change. And it's actually interesting that the one feature that somehow kind of, you know, got got completely um, safe from this is uh, Tableau Pulse. And that is interesting because, of course, Tableau have been bigging up Tableau Pulse. I've never, uh, I can't remember a time when Tableau Marketing has been pitching a feature like it's released when it hasn't been released. And it's targeted for December 2023. This is super interesting because it suggests that Tableau Pulse won't come as part of a, a, an update to Tableau Cloud. It won't come as part 
of uh, an experience that we're used to. It can't come as part of an experience because we're just about to get those feature releases. So if you do testing and release cycles, Tableau Pulse can't be part of that because 23.3 is about to come out unless 23.3 is coming out in December 23. So there's a lot of uh, sort of things in the air. I'm sure it'll all come clear. Um, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below, questions. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Um, it's super interesting. I think this is pretty normal for a company of Tableau scale and size. It will always bring up questions about, you know, people who are on the wrong side of the fence of this kind of decision. But in all honesty, I do think a lot of customers are using Tableau Cloud. And for them, I think, I think honestly, upgrades have just become such a normal thing that they don't really notice it until there's bugs. And I think that's what people were noticing quite often. And maybe it's a good thing. By pacing things out more, you get less of those instances where people notice these upgrades because of issues. Um, you get more opportunities to celebrate bigger chunks of features. And at least for Tableau Cloud customers, there's no issue with upgrading desktop and prep as and when. And it really starts to kind of, you know, uh, point the question, does Tableau just want you to start using Tableau Cloud more? And is this a way to get you there? I doubt it is. But then again, the dynamics are kind of interesting. I think it's a valid question to ask. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. and I'll see you in the next one.